What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be talking about movement speeds within Warzone and trying to find the absolute best method for getting across the map quickly while on foot. Keep in mind, of course, vehicles are always going to be the faster option, but we're putting vehicles aside for this video and just looking at what we can do to maximize the amount of ground we can cover while on foot. Now, I did do a movement speed breakdown for a regular multiplayer not too long ago, and all of the stuff from that video still holds true today. However, there's a couple extra techniques we're going to be testing within this that are a lot more effective for covering long distances like we have to in Warzone, whereas in regular multiplayer, they don't really come into play too much because we're covering much shorter distances on average. So just a quick recap from that multiplayer movement speed video. When you're sprinting, we get a 1.3 times multiplier from our base movement speed when we're not sprinting. Then with the tactical sprint option, which by the way, if you're new to the game, maybe a free to play player, you have to double tap the sprint button and that will give you your tactical sprint. This allows you to move at 1.5 times your normal walking speed. However, with this one, unlike the regular sprint, it's not unlimited. You can only do this for four seconds at a time before you run out of breath. And you can double that up to eight seconds if you use the double time perk. Also with double time, you do recover from that tactical sprint faster, so you can get your next tactical sprint going again sooner. Now in that video, I went into much greater detail into the different weapon types and their movement speeds and everything like that. We're going to be putting that aside today and just focusing on the techniques that you can use to get around the map a little bit faster, regardless of which gun is in your hands at that time. Although I will say, if you've got two weapons, you want to make sure you're running around with the lighter weight weapon. Because your movement speed in this game is determined by the weapon in your hand, not the weapons that are in your inventory. So if you've got an LMG and an SMG, for instance, and you're trying to cover ground as quickly as possible, you definitely want to have the SMG in your hands while moving. So let's get into the testing here. I went on this nice flat stretch of road here by the Boneyard area, and I selected a distance of 188 meters because that's half of one of the big grid areas, and it just seemed like a reasonable distance for doing this test. But I kept that consistent. We're on nice flat ground, so everything should be nice and controlled here. And the first thing I measured was what happens if you just use your tactical sprint at first and then you just continue sprinting on with your regular sprint once that tactical sprint runs out. This is what the average player will do when navigating the map. They just want to sprint from point A to point B. And this took me a total of 27.51 seconds. So that right there is going to be our control. Next up, I tried a technique that a lot of people have been sharing to me. Somebody posted a clip of this on Reddit where if you use your tactical sprint until it runs out, you immediately slide, and then when you stand up again, you can squeeze a little bit more tactical sprint in there. Not much though, it's just for a really brief period of time, but if you just keep repeating that process every time you run out of tactical sprint, in theory, this should get you around the map a little bit faster because you're maximizing the amount of time you get that tactical sprint. So I did this and measured it, and the result I got here was 27.51 seconds, which is literally identical to the amount of time it took when I just used my initial tactical sprint followed by a regular sprint for the rest of the distance. So this technique does not get you around the map any faster. It's not any slower either, but it's not faster. Now the explanation for this is quite simple. At the end of a slide, there's almost like a little bit of a delay before you can activate that sprint again, and it really seems to be holding you back and canceling out any sort of benefit we're getting with those little tiny spurts of tactical sprint that we're getting between each slide. So as a result, if you're just looking to get from point A to point B faster, that technique's not going to do anything for you. Although I will say, that's going to make you a harder target to hit, and you're still covering ground in the same amount of time. So maybe in a really stressed situation where you've got somebody sniping at you from a long distance, it will make it much harder for them to hit that shot on you if you're constantly implementing these slides in between sprints. So it's not a terrible option in those situations, but just don't expect it to get you around the map any faster. However, we can take this technique one step further, and this is something I've seen quite a few pro players doing. And this is the same thing, you use your tactical sprint until it runs out, and then when it runs out, you immediately slide. However, as soon as you engage that slide, we want to aim down sight with our weapon. And it just has to be a really brief moment of aiming down sight. We don't have to fully aim down sight or anything like that. Just a little brief moment of aiming down sight. And what that seems to do is it cancels out that little delay at the end of a slide, so we get back into our tactical sprint a little bit sooner. When I use this technique over this same distance, I was able to cover this distance in just 25.8 seconds. So this is about 6.6% faster than our control. And 6.6% is a pretty decent amount if we're talking about movement speed, especially over longer distances. That can make a pretty big difference. 
And once again, we still get that benefit of being a really hard target to hit while implementing this technique. The big downside to this though, is just the amount of focus and attention and timing that this requires to make this happen. I'm sure if you do it enough, it'll basically just become muscle memory. And maybe you wanna do that, especially if you're one of those sweaty try hard boys like myself sometimes. However, if I'm being completely honest, I don't see myself using this technique all that often, especially in situations where there's no rush, there's no stress to get from point A to point B. I don't have the gas pushing me. I don't have somebody trying to pick me off from a distance while I'm in the open. To be completely honest, in those situations, more often than not, I'm just gonna take the lazy way out and just sprint normally, or better yet, hop in a vehicle. But with that, that's gonna wrap it up for today's quick video. So far, that's the best movement speed technique I've been able to find to get you from point A to point B as fast as possible without using vehicles. Of course, if you feel you have an even faster technique, please let me know in the comment section down below. I am willing to test various techniques on top of this to see if there's any that are any faster. And if I do discover a technique that's noticeably faster, I'll be sure to keep you guys updated with another video. Also, I'm interested in hearing from you guys in the comment section below. Were you guys surprised by these results? Were you surprised that the first technique that I tested there didn't actually improve movement speed at all? And also, do you actually see yourself using that technique that gets you around the map about 6.6% faster? Just let me know those thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoy the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.